now we're going to grab the tangent and the secant. Then on Thursday, we're going to talk about the inverse sine function and its wonderfulness. And then on Friday, we're going to go inverse cosine and inverse tangent, and its phenomenalness. And then next week, we're going to do some inverse trigs and uh, compositions. Compositions on Wednesdays. Reviewing next Thursday. And then, as you can see, we have a test on this stuff on Friday, the 31st. Okay? So, um, it's, it, I kind of like to, you know, rather than have one big chapter four test, we have like many tests along the way to, to break it up. So, to make it a little bit easier for you and your cottage cheeseness. Oh, sorry, I didn't see it. Hammering it down right there. All right, so, today we're going to talk curve fitting. So, in the past, or right before semester break, we were dealing with uh, graphing a sine curve. Well, today we're going to take all of that and we're going to go in reverse. Okay? So we're going to have data, and now I want to get the equation. Okay? And it's, it works out to be much the same type of thing. So... If we refresh our memories with y equals a, and then I'll put sine or cosine of b times the quantity x minus c plus d. So whether it's a sine curve or a cosine curve, it follows the same thing. Refresh my memories, thinking back a week and a half-ish. What does A do? It's the amplitude. So what does that do? So it pushes up, up the high and pushes down the low from the middle, right? Okay. So that's the amplitude. Pushes up, pushes down. Also, if it's negative, it flips it. Okay, so, and it, it also does it flipping if it's negative. Okay, what does B do? And what was the formula that we were using for period? The period is 2 pi over B. absolute value of B. Okay. If B is negative, does it do anything in cosine? No. no. Does it do anything in sine? What does it do? Flips it, right? Okay. So it doesn't do anything in cosine, but it flips it in, in sine. Okay. We're going to pretty much stay straightforward with positive B values when we're coming up with them. Say if um, the B value was negative and the A value was negative, would that cosine Yep. Okay. C value. What does my C value do? Wait, what? So it moves my start, right? Love it. What does D value do? The middle. So it's my vertical shift, right? Yep. Okay. 
So what's going to happen today is we're going to adjust our middle. We're going to then figure out how high it goes and how low it goes. And then somewhere along the line, we're going to have a start. Right, because we could start in one of those three spots. And then we're going to have an end way out here. And somewhere in between there, it's going to get all funky. We could either go, we could go like this. 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 Okay? We could do all of those different tracks to get there. Okay? Right? So, let's do this. Front side of your uh, pink note sheet, right? Top one. Okay? It says, find me a sine curve for this graph. Okay? Well, so my sine curve then is going to be y equals a sine of b x. Oops, I put plus. That should be minus. Minus c plus d. So I need to find a bunch of stuff to go along in there. Where does sine start? Low, middle, or high? Low. Sign. Where does sign start? Low, middle, or high? High. Sign. Where does middle. sign start? Middle. Low, middle, or high? Middle. Middle. Since we guessed all three of them, we're going to go with the one that's right at the end. Sign curves start in the middle. So the first thing that I should find is the middle of my curve. So if the high value of my curve is at negative 4, and the low value of my curve is at negative 16, where's the middle? If the high is at <laughs> negative 4 and the low is at negative 16, what do you got? How'd you get it? No, I didn't. No, I was just going. How do we find the middle? Careful, there's a drum right there, Maddie. It's yeah, Exactly. Break it up. Break it up so that people can figure out that really the middle is the average of the high and the low. Right? So we add them together and divide by 2. So we get negative 10 for our middle. So that means that this sine curve could start at any one of these middle points. Because sine curves start in the middle. Okay. Where do you want your sine curve to start? What? At 2? Can't start at 2. Negative 1. Again, sign starts in the middle. Where do you want it to start? Negative 1? Yeah. Okay, all right, that's fine with me. So the sign curve is going to start at negative 1. So we are going to start right there. Yes. 
So, do I know my A value, my amplitude? What is it? Six, the distance from here, my middle to the top is six, or to the bottom is also six. So this is going to be six times the sine of, do I know my B value? Not yet, do I? Okay. So if I start at negative 1, that means that I would end at 11. Agree? Speak now or forever hold your peace. Works. What do you got? The period is 12. No, well the period is 12 then, right? Yeah. Right? Because if I begin at negative 1 and I end at 11, my period is 12. So what's <laughs> my B value? <coughs> 1 6? Pi over 6? What's the formula? Period equals 2 pi divided by b, right? Okay, so 12 equals 2 pi over b. So b equals 2 pi over 12. So b is... Pi over 6. What do I put after the x then? What do you got? Plus 1 because it's the start is negative 1. What do I put for my D value? Minus 10? Okay. Now, here's why I say that the, you can start this at multiple different spots. I could have written this as 6 sine of pi over 6 times x minus 11 right that's starting at my green circle now and running through I could have done negative 6 sine of pi over 6 times x minus 5, then minus 10. Why is the amplitude negative? Because now I'm starting at this one. And I'm going down to go next. You know what I mean? So I'd have to, I'd have to flip it. Okay. Likewise, I could have done negative 6 sine of pi over 6 times x minus 15, 16, 17. It doesn't matter where you start. It doesn't matter which one you go. The only thing for you that matters is that you have a sine term. A sine equation. We will take the responsibility when we grade these to adjust accordingly. Okay? So now we're just making equation. Yep. I had said that earlier. Yeah. You were probably watching Cottage Cheese get eaten. Perhaps. Perhaps. Okay, go for this one. This is a cosine curve. Yeah, but negative 
would stay the same. I would also accept on this particular one, negative 5 cosine of pi over 4 times x minus 2, then plus 2. I would also accept this to be negative 10 or negative 18. I thought you took that. Questions, comments, concerns, clarifications? Good? Yeah. Throughout the day, the depth of water at the end of a dock varies with the tides. The table shows the depth in meters at various times throughout the morning. High tide is at 4 a.m., low tide is at 10 a.m. What we're talking about here is something that looks like as this. Okay. So you're currently at low tide at the end of the dock. Watch it, it's the water's going. And now the tide is starting to come in. The farther north you get, the farther you get closer to the, the poles, the more that this is over accentuated. This is, I believe, somewhere in Alaska. They're working. The clouds are working. The thermals coming off the. You oh, can tell that the wind is coming. Wind is coming at you, and it's coming off the mountain, and yeah. then it's creating the. It's just rolling the clouds right there. Okay. So then the tide has come in. <laughs> now you'll see it uh, like that. That had a a funky. Dock like that, and by the time we left, it was it was all the way up again. Where was it? Where was it? Yeah. We were in uh, Telkita. Uh, Telkita. Hmm? I think it was. Yeah, I think it was Telkita. Where is that? Alaska. Alaska. We went to Alaska. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So first thing is you got to graph the data point. 
complaints. Okay? So it says, oops, oh no. Actually, we don't even need that, and that's too high. So at 12 a.m., the depth was 2.55. Then at 2 a.m., it goes up, or the depth, I should say, goes to 3.80. Then at 4, it goes to 4.40. Then at 6, it is back down to 3.8. Then at 8, back at 2.55. Then at 10, we are back down to, or down to 1.8. And then at 12 p.m., we're back here-ish. Yeah. Now it tells you that high tide is at 4 a.m. What does that mean? If high tide is at 4 a.m., what does that mean? That's the highest it will go, or the, the deepest it will get in terms of this one. So this is my high value. It says that low tide is at 10 a.m. What does that mean? That's the lowest it'll get. Okay. So where is my middle? What do you got? So what is it? So you add 1.8 and 4.4 together. So what is it? <laughs> what is the middle? 3.9. So that puts my middle... Threw in there about, right? Which, if I connected these, you know, if I draw in my curve here, that puts this, <coughs> puts my start at about 1 a.m. Agree? So if I start at the middle, then that's a sign start. If 3.1 is my middle, what is my amplitude? Three point one is my middle. What is my amplitude? Oh yeah, one point three. Now I've got two different ways of doing this. If I continue on with this curve. 
then that would put this somewhere in there. Or if I continue on with this curve, that would put it down somewhere about there. So I would guesstimate here that this is at approximately 7, and this is at approximately 13, which makes my start be at 1 a.m., and my end be at 1 p.m., which is a total distance of 12. which makes my period be 12 hours. Which makes my B value become pi over 6. My D value is 3.1. So to find the depth, now you plug in the whatever hour you are at. Yes. So find the depth at 9 a.m. and at 3 p.m. So if I'm going to find the depth at 9 a.m., That is going to be x equals 9. So it's going to be 1.3 times the sine of pi over 6 times 9 minus 1 plus 3.1. Somebody with a calculator, help me out. Don't worry, I'll get it. God forbid I ask you to calculate something on a calculator. What did, what did they just say, Trinity? Somebody with a calculator, help me out. Anybody? So, 
what I would like you to do now is in your in your tables I would like you to pick any city in the world okay? research its average monthly temperature over the course of an entire year okay? I want you to create a scatter plot of your data okay so we'll use we'll use uh, Tabuchi or whatever this one is okay um, so they made, this is from an earlier class, so they calculated it out, they made a scatter plot of it, um, and then I want you to make a sinusoidal function to fit your data. Graph it on top of your data to make sure that it's a good fit on the scatter plot that you created on your calculator, and then you're going to create a poster of your city that has your scatter plot, your function, and what A, B, A and D mean in terms of your city. Okay? I know that A is the amplitude, but I want to know what A is in terms of your city. So it's not just amplitude. Okay? Okay? And what D is. Up here, you will find big pieces of paper. In the box, you will find markers and colored pencils and other assorted arty type materials. <laughs> you will probably need your Chromebook, or somebody in your group will need their Chromebook to do this one. You have a half an hour to get this done. I need to go. 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 I need to go.